In this video, we'll look at the Boggist C1 Pro, a 500 watt e-scooter that pulls like it's a thousand. Whoa. Welcome back to the VRC and here we have a tech video featuring the Bogus C1 Pro. As always with the tech videos there will be a VR giveaway that I'll tell you about later in the video. But the winners of the last giveaway and a copy of the brilliant Demio are Murdo McLeod and Trevor Nelson. Reply to the pin comment and we'll sort out your game codes. Don't forget if you love VR and cool technology then hit that subscribe button and ding the bell so you don't miss a video. So first of all let's see how that scooter was packed up. Done. Polystyrene, polystyrene. Instruction manual. Yay! <laughs> oh, it's stuck. Why is that stuck? Uh, Toolkit that's. Ugh, what happened there? A phone, phone holder, a bell, charger most likely. Yeah. Chargey bitty. There is the Boggis C1 Pro. Let's get outdoors and see how it goes. Boggis contacted me and asked me if I'd like to test their scooters, so full disclosure, it was sent for free, but they haven't paid me to say anything in particular about it, so rest assured you'll find out all the things about the scooter that are great, but also the few things that are not so great. And those not so great things started when I tried to charge that bad boy up. They don't go in there. Am I looking at the roll? Oh, neck. But when I turned it on, there was half battery left, so maybe that was enough for me to give it a good first test. The saddle, nice and squishy. <laughs> this is odd. Whoa. Right, let's put this down. Hopefully you can still hear. I've got my microphone right there. Right, I'm in eco mode right now. 12 kilometers per hour. I don't know if there's a way to get, I'm in mid, I'm gonna go straight to high. Ah, it's half battery. This is just, I'm gonna stand up. Scooters just don't like taking me up a hill. Ah, oh, we don't have one bar. Oh, it's flashing. I think it's gonna die. Yeah, it's just, it's a bit embarrassing that is. But, oh well. So I got in touch with Boggist and they quickly shipped me out the correct charger. So with the scooter now fully charged, I left to get my first impressions. 14 kilometers, 15 kilometers, 16 kilometers. It's pulling quite well. Let's go mid, right? Mid, 19, 20, 21, 22 kilometers, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27 kilometers per hour, 28. This is medium. This is all right. This is the first time, 29, this is the first time I've felt that I've been pretty fast up the hill. Is that a car behind me? No. That's weird. Not used to this. Well done, scooter up the hill. Jeez, I haven't even got into high yet. I'm still in mid. Whoa! This feels a lot punchier than the iX4, I think. 35, 36, whoa! 37. 38, 39, oh big jump, whoa, <laughs> whoa, yeah, yeah, come on, come on, I'm about to get to my usual space, 35, 36, come on, do it here, 41, 42, 43, 44! Ah, the bend coming. 44. Whoa. So let's take a closer look at this super little scooter. <laughs> this is the Boggist C1 Pro from Boggist. 
So this is a 600 watt scooter and it packs a hell of a punch. It's got a 48 volt, 13 amp hour of battery, which is good for 40 kilometers. That's the manufacturer's claim time. As you can see, it has a nice comfy saddle and I can verify that is a comfy saddle and it also comes with suspension. The scooter itself also has a nice springy suspension, front and rear. It has a rear disc brake as well as a brake light. And the front brake, you may notice there's no obvious disc, but this front brake is actually an anti-lock braking system. And I can confirm it works very, very well. Although it is a bit weird. Whoa, the hell happened then? Some sort of weird other brake. It's got a nice deck with a nice rubberized tread. The kickstand is a kickstand, but it's nice and accessible. Easy to get when you need to. It has a thumb bell, no buzzer, but I don't mind that at all. And a smooth thumb throttle. I do have this nice wing mirror on it, which I find extremely useful, but the mirror doesn't come with the scooter. And as you can see, the screen is very nice. If you want to get zero start, turn it on. Within a few seconds, when it comes on, press it again. And then, ooh, off it goes. Let's just lift that back tire up. In low mode, 26 kilometers per hour. Obviously this is the no load speed. Mid, let's take my feet, 37 kilometers per hour. And finally high, 57 kilometers per hour. Unfortunately, there does not seem to be a way to turn the kilometers per hour into miles per hour because there doesn't seem to be an app for this scooter unlike some of the others. That's not a big issue, but I would like to see miles per hour because that's what I'm used to. Here are those chunky run flat tires. Apparently they're stab proof. I'm not gonna test that though. Now you might have noticed that this scooter is rather small. However, it is currently in its smallest possible position, which actually my six year old can actually sit on. I haven't let him go on it, but he can sit on it. So let's see how big it goes. So pull that lever there. Bring this up. Interesting. Little plastic thing comes out. Right. Push that back in. So that's already a bit higher. And then the seat, which is removable. Probably safely goes up to that high. Now it is quite a bit bigger. Now I do recommend when you're sitting down on a scooter to not have it too high because you've got more control when it's a bit lower. So I have it about there and I'll probably have the uh, seat a tiny bit lower than that. Only a bit lower, just so there's a bit more strength. So I have it about that. Now let's take a look and see how easy this folds down. So obviously this time, unlike my other scooters, he's got a saddle to uh, worry about, completely remove the saddle. Like that, you pull the quick release and then you press this button on the side and then the quick release drops down, push that bit down and then unlock. You go all the way, clicking into place at the bottom. Obviously the only problem with that is that then you've got to carry a saddle around, but it's still just the saddle so it's not that bad. Pulling it back up again, just as easy, push that button, this comes up, clicks into place, push the lock down, so now I can't push the button, so that's safe. Pull this back up, push this little button again, bring the quick release, twist it, put the saddle back in. Lock that into place and ready to go. As for the lights, the lights come on automatically. There is no button for the lights. As soon as it gets dark, the lights will pop on. Let's see how this scooter does at night time. Going to the switch, is that it? There he goes. When you come, lights on. Yeah, there we go, that's quite good, isn't it, that? I've been doing the skew, I haven't checked out the suspension. That's quite good. Doesn't bottom out, I'm a heavy dude. Well, I'm not that heavy. I'm heavy for a normal person. 
whatever normal is, as in the norm, you know. Out of the box, everything seemed fine, although the handlebars were maybe pointing a degree in the wrong direction. Barely noticeable, but a bit annoying for me simply because I knew about it. As the steering column isn't a circular shape, I couldn't really see an obvious way to put it right without having to take it all apart. The lights were nice and bright, but I would have loved to see some side lights and indicators like the other off-road scooter I've reviewed, especially since this is a sit-down scooter, which gives it a more use it on the road kind of vibe. And while we're talking about that seat, I honestly thought that I'd hate it. And when the scooter wasn't fully charged, I did feel like a granny on a mobility scooter. Although I've seen those things go pretty damn fast. However, once I lowered the handlebars to a position more suitable for sitting, I really enjoyed cruising the streets of America, sitting down at close to 30 miles per hour. The seat post has suspension that I'm not entirely sure that the scooter needs. It also feels like it might snap off too. It hasn't though, and I am pretty heavy, but that's just how it felt. Since the scooter already has suspension, I think a more solid post would probably be better. So on to this video's VR giveaway, and it's for one of the best first person arena shooters on the quest and that is Hyper Dash. It's fast and furious action where you can dash around shooting up the other team and trust me it can get intense. Two copies are up for grabs and all you need to do is click the thumbs up button and comment down below if you'd ride a boggist as a sit down scooter or a stand up scooter and tell us why. Obviously anyone can tell us what they do but if you want that VR giveaway let us know by putting a few emojis into your post too. Back to the scooter and at 20 three kilograms it's pretty heavy for an e-scooter and not the kind of scooter that you'd want to be lugging onto a bus or a train however it could be done the seat does make it harder to fold down so if you were using the scooter as a last mile solution i.e after getting off public transport then you'd want to do it without the seat however with a range of around 40 kilometers then this scooter is definitely ready to tackle those longer commutes and personally i'd be happy to ride up to six miles away on the c1 pro it's such a comfortable ride with the saddle and suspension that i'd go a lot further but if i did i'd want to charge it before coming back due to the nature of batteries becoming weaker and making the scooter slower as it discharges. A few other things I would have liked to see on the C1 Pro is an app. Now, the other off-road scooter I tried didn't have an app either, but at least it had a lot of functionality in its computer. There's barely any settings on the Boggist. You can't even turn the lights on and off as it does it for you. So if I'm being chased by a gang of e-scooter thieves, you can't hide in an alley with the lights off without turning the whole thing off. I think they're gone, are they gone? There he is! The speed and distance on the screen was also in kilometres and kilometres per hour and unfortunately I couldn't change it to miles, which is what we use here in America. Having to turn on zero star every time is annoying and the process to turn on cruise control is very complicated. So hold the left brake, turn it on. One, two, three. Press that. And then let go. However, at least once it's activated, it does stay on. I'm just not sure how to turn it off. Being a 500 watt scooter, it means it's basically going head to head with that other scooter I reviewed, which I thought was an extremely good scooter. Be sure to subscribe to my other channel, the EVRC, which is totally dedicated to testing electric vehicles and where I will be putting both scooters head to head to find out which one is best. Until then, the Boggish C1 Pro is a fantastic little, or big if you want, scooter for a great price. It looks great and it can be a relaxed ride, it can do light off-road, it can do the last mile if you take off the saddle, or it could take you much further. So, who's this scooter for? Well, it's so adjustable that even my six-year-old could ride it. Get out the way, people! I've got to squish you! I didn't let him of course but it is suitable for all sizes of people tall and short. I'm close to 100 kilograms as well and it propelled me around absolutely no problem. Apparently the weight limit is 150 kilograms so it can take quite a bit more. It feels so much faster than it should be and I like that the lower power settings are actually usable and can still get me up hills if I wanted to enjoy the scenery a little bit more. It's well made if a little harder to adjust because it feels a bit over engineered. If it had an app to add a little more customization to the settings it would basically be the perfect mid power budget e-scooter. As it is though it really is still bloody good. 
For more of the Bogus C1 Pro, subscribe to my other channel, the EVRC, where there's the extended first impressions and there will be further tests coming soon. Links for that as well as this scooter are in the description below. And that brings us to the end of this video. If you enjoyed that or found it helpful, do smash the thumbs up button and thank you so much for watching to the end if you are still here. Thanks again to Cousin Rick for joining me in America to help me get some good shots and let me know in the comments below if you like the look of this scooter or if you're just doing your research and are thinking of joining the exciting e-scooter world. Thanks again for watching, take care of yourselves, and hopefully I'll see you next time. Or feel free to check out some of our other e-scooter or e-bike reviews. That was a VRC Tech video, and see ya.